My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. We are drawing closer and closer to the end of the Christmas season, and in Christmas we contemplate this truth, this reality, that you, Jesus, have chosen to become one of us, to take on our human flesh and to share our fate. We also contemplate how you came into the world. Not so long ago we read those words from sacred scripture from the Book of Wisdom, for while Gentle silence enveloped all things, and night in its swift course was now half gone. Your all-powerful word leaped from heaven, from the royal throne. And C.S. Lewis notes that you entered the world anonymously and clandestinely, that you slipped quietly behind enemy lines. But today, on this solemnity of the Epiphany, we celebrate how you reveal yourself to the nations and not just to the Jews, but to the rest of the world. And that word epiphany comes from the Latin word epiphania, that in turn comes from the Greek epiphanin, which means to reveal, to manifest. And from today's gospel, taken from the gospel of Matthew chapter 2, we read how that took place. We read, after Jesus had been born at Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod, some wise men came to Jerusalem from the east. Some fathers of the church think that the wise men came from Persia. Others, like St. Jerome and Augustine, think that the, the wise men came from Babylon, while other church fathers think that they came from Arabia. In all these cases, they came from the east. And in any case, they came from outside the boundaries of Holy Land. Other translations of the Bible use the word magi in place of wise men. And it means the same thing, wise men. Magi comes from the word magoi, Greek for wise men. Let's continue reading from the Gospel. Where is the infant king of the Jews? They asked. We saw his star as it rose and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was perturbed, and so was the whole of Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people and inquired from them where this Christ was to be born. At Bethlehem in Judea, they told him, for this is what the prophet wrote, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, for out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people Israel. Two years ago, an animation was released and it was precisely titled The Star. It was a Christmas animation. The star tells a Christmas story, but mainly from the point of view of the animals, the animals that were around the birth of our Lord. For example, the donkey, the sheep, the pigeon, camels, and even some dogs. And many of these animals see the star. And like the wise men, they decide to follow the star. And then going back to the Gospel, we read, Then Herod summoned the wise men to see him privately. He asked them the exact date on which the star had appeared, and sent them on to Bethlehem. Go and find out about the child, he said, and when you have found him, let me know, so that I too may go and do him homage. Herod was a ruthless king, and was filled with lust for power and blood. He felt threatened by this newborn king. He was double-faced, and he lies when he says that he wants to find out more about this child, so that then he can go and do him homage. What he really wanted was to get rid of this rival king. We eventually know what he did, because on the 28th of December we celebrated the Feast of the Holy Innocents. He had ordered the massacre of children below the age of two years. Then Matthew goes on to say, Having listened to what the king had to say, they set out, they followed the star. And St. Matthew says as much, he says that, And there in front of them was the star they had seen rising. It went forward and halted over the place where the child was. The sight of the star filled them with delight. And going into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and falling to their knees, they did him homage. And Jesus, you revealed yourself to this wise man. They faithfully followed the star. They fixed their gaze on the star, and they were relentless in following it. 
most probably they faced difficulties, obstacles, discouragement, but they persevered. They took the risk, and the dangers and risks of their journey was no match for their hope, for their ambition, for their dream. Eventually they are rewarded. They find the newborn king. They find you, Jesus. And they fell on their knees. They did you homage. And every day you manifest yourself to me. Whenever I go to Mass, whenever I enter the oratory or the church, and you're there in the tabernacle, truly and substantially present, with your body, with your blood, with your soul, with your divinity. May I never forget that you're there. May I pay you homage by falling on my knees, by taking good care of that genuflection, without reverence, without adoration, accompanied with an aspiration, such as, Adoro te devote, devoutly I adore you, or, Jesus, I love you, or any other aspiration that I may have in my heart. Then we go on reading that, then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. A lot has been said about the significance of these gifts. Some say that that gold stands for Christ's kingly status, that frankincense stands for his divinity, and that myrrh for his anointing at his sacrificial death. St. Irenaeus, for example, offers this interpretation that that gold, frankincense and myrrh respectively represented Christ as King, God, and also as the suffering Redeemer. Right, Gold for King, frankincense for God, and myrrh for the suffering Redeemer. St. Irenaeus says that these three gifts also represent virtue, prayer and suffering. Virtue, prayer and suffering. And so, Jesus, I want to acknowledge you as my King, as my God, and as my Redeemer. And I also want to offer you my gifts. And the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh that I want to offer you are precisely a life of virtue, a life of prayer, and also a life in which I accept the suffering that you allow into my life. And in this new calendar year, I want to resolve, Lord, to grow in virtue, that with your help, Jesus, I will strive to acquire these human virtues that will form a good basis for the supernatural virtues, for these gifts that you have given me of faith, hope and love. That is the gold I want to offer you. And what about the frankincense? Well, Lord, I want to resolve to take better care of my prayer life, that I may truly be a soul of prayer, that every day I set time aside so that you and I can have this conversation of love, and in order to do that, I resolve to set aside a specific time to do my prayer. Intimately connected to the Epiphany is the Blessed Virgin Mary. And next to our Blessed Mother is Saint Joseph, our Father and Lord, the Protector and the Father of that family of Nazareth. When the three wise men went to see the child God, they must have met the two, the Blessed Virgin Mary and Saint Joseph, her spouse. And these two must have received them and led them to see the child God. Let us then go to the Blessed Virgin Mary and to St. Joseph and ask them to always lead us to God, to Jesus Christ, who has become a man like us, who is that reconciliation of humanity and divinity. And we can ask them to help us to present our gifts, the gifts of a life of virtue, of a life of prayer, and that acceptance of whatever cross our Lord may wish to send us. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into practice. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.